Yes, it's that time again. It is that time for Malcontented Minutes. Mods and admins, get ready to drop the link to the poll. Let me explain to you what Malcontented Minutes is if you haven't watched us before. By the way, if you haven't watched us before, give us a follow, please. We really like that. Although, Instagram, that's fine. But YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, whatever it is, follow, subscribe, like, share, do all that good stuff because it helps us grow. And this is another opportunity to say, spam those hearts, spam those hearts. Let our mods and admins know how much you love the work that they do. And let me explain to you what Malcontented Minutes is. We have about 20 minutes, although we tend to go a little bit over, but I think we kind of get it done in about 25 to 27 minutes. There are 10 stories. Um, I tell a story in a minute. Jennifer gets a minute to unpack it. We move on to the next story. And here's the best part. You, the audience, gets to control the news. That's right. What you get to do is vote in our poll, and you get to vote for the story that you want Jennifer and I to talk about a little bit more at the end of the show. Now, we're going to go ahead and have the mods and admins drop the link to that in the comments. However, I would say if you vote right now you don't know what the stories are. So you can go ahead and hold out for that until we get going. Jennifer, are we ready? Yes, I'm very ready. I'm very excited because we have some good ones tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, on your markers. All right, here we go. And they's going to start the clock. Story number one. Seattle Mariners president Kevin Mather is out of a job after going on a 45-minute screen during a Zoom meeting this weekend. Ironically, Mather is having to resign for telling the truth about the rich, the empowered, and the behind the scenes of professional baseball. He criticized the Japanese player's English speaking ability. He talked about how the team intentionally lowballs free agent players, then ties them up in bad contracts to just sit them on the bench because if they use them, <laughs> then they actually have to pay them. He criticized up-and-comer Jared Kelnick, outfielder that a lot of Mariners fans are excited about for having a gut, and said even if he destroyed it in the Cactus League, he's not moving to the bigs this season. Same goes for pitcher prospect Logan Gilbert, who they just plan to sit on his happy ass all year. It's worth noting that Mather's rant was in front of a very white, rich audience at the Bellevue Breakfast Rotary Club. As for the Mariners... Management has already said, fans, 20-year drought of the playoffs, and we're going to keep cranking. Jennifer, you get time to unpack that. It's um, particularly interesting because you talk about, you know, audience, and you can just imagine this room of wealthy white people laughing at his jokes about, you know, um, the, the accent of the one person um, or, you know, the way in which they you know, low ball players and then don't pay them and set them on the bench intentionally. Um, you know, you and I talked a little bit about this earlier. I don't always know what stories you're going to do, but we did talk a little bit about this one. And you're right. It's very much like, you know, the villain being caught on videotape. Um, it's extremely gross. Um, you know, capitalism in and of itself um, is disgusting. Wealth hoarding, um, the wealthy just um, basically don't have a grasp on society and they're not ever really held accountable. So this accountability, I think, um, in this context of him losing his job, he resigned originally, uh, is good. But you know there's a place for him somewhere else. Yep. He will be somewhere else in three to six months, probably making more money and screwing up the lives of more yep. people and getting paid to do it. Yep. Because that's how it rolls. All right, Jennifer, you take us to story number two. All right, so we're going to start with this week the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe won their legal battle over the Trump administration appeal and will keep their reservation status. Um, <clears throat> quotes, uh, the claim that the tribute of the first life, the tribe of the first Thanksgiving, was not an original Native American tribe has always been disingenuous, um, said Brett Bill Keating, and that the Trump administration's sudden attempt to remove their land from trust last March in the midst of a pandemic was heartless. Uh, you know, this is uh, this whole idea about recognition um, and trust status and things like this has been ongoing uh, for Native peoples since uh, the development of reservations and in, in particular after the Dawes Allotment Act of 1887, uh, when basically Native, Native peoples on reservations were forced into private property ownership and they checkerboarded reservations and sold off um, chunks 
of land to white settlers. So this is a huge victory because uh, there's been a lot of contests about, uh, you know, the Mashpee Wampanoag because they're so small being able to keep this land. There wasn't a lot of land there. And if you look at the longer history of reservations and native peoples, especially uh, in the Northeast, it's extremely problematic, but you know, the Wampanoag were uh, basically the first tribe that settlers in Jamestown, not Jamestown, uh, but settlers on the East uh, encountered during Thanksgiving and, and that helped them survive the winter. Um, chief Massasoit was the chief of the Wampanoags when uh, yep. the pilgrims showed up in Plymouth uh, in uh, 1620. And we get the name of the state, Massachusetts, from Chief Massasoit. Uh, we have a piece that is up on Malcontent News that we put up every year um, about uh, Thanksgiving time that goes into the story of the Wampanoag and the contributions that they made to, quite frankly, keep the settlers from starving to death. So... It is beyond disingenuous to say they're not a tribe, not really, because it's yeah. just beyond disingenuous. We can keep unpacking this, but we have to keep moving. And with that, we're going to go ahead um, to story number three. Story number three. It could have been a catastrophe, but it turned into a perfect situation. In a sign of the times, the Butler County Sheriff Bomb Squad was called for a suspicious package left outside the doorstep of a church in New Miami. Officers stalked the black duffel bag with stealthy determination, waiting for the right chance to pounce on the felonious situation. And inside the bag, they found a complex device of potential cuteness destruction. Sprinkles the cat and her six healthy kittens blew up the local news. All are in good health, and the domesticated purr, I can't even do this. What are you doing? Purr, purr, purrists are at the Animal Friends Humane Society in Hamilton, Ohio. Officials don't plan to charge Sprinkles, saying the worst she could do is wharf up some hairballs. You get 60 seconds. How am I supposed to follow that, um, you know, like full of cat puns story you did there? That's absolutely adorable. Uh, I, you know, it's, I always hate to see when animals are dropped off uh, like that, especially a mama and babies. Um, so I hope that they all find good homes. Uh, and I'm really glad that, you know, Sprinkles is uh, not going to be charged with, with any crimes. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's a, a, a good thing. All right, I guess I guess we can move to the next story. Yes. There you go. All right, so more altruism out of Texas um, in the Lake Travis area. And so local businesses are feeding the hungry. Um, so you have Lakeway Crago's Pizza and Pasteria owner Andrew Rinkin um, hunkered down with his family right out the house of icy weather at his Hudson Bend home. Instead, he took calls from hungry patrons and fired up the pizza oven because they had plenty of ingredients. Um, and working with inventory he had prior to the storm, he basically uh, made meals for 120 workers in the hospital that evening. Uh, and then Good Samaritans in the area with four-wheel drive vehicles helped make the food and delivered it to the hospital. Uh, so, you know, this is just another instance. Last week we talked about the furniture store uh you know, helping and letting people in when they had no heat and food and what a huge thing that was. Um, but we also had a brewery that opened. Uh, we have, you know, just a lot of people in that area that have resources helping out each other. And I think that's a really good um, example of altruism and community. And perhaps Ted Cruz could learn a little something from that. So I lived in Texas for eight years and my parents retired into rural East Texas, Polk County. So Lake Travis mm -hmm. would have been Northeast from there. There's a family yeah. guy. I know like the malcontent's just going to like go to family guy. There's a family guy episode. One of the early ones where they go into the witness relocation program because of Meg and they go down to the South and it ends with this punchline where, where the, the Griffins of course, screw everything up, piss everybody off. Um, but in the end of the day, the people helped them out. He's like, wait a minute, we thought you were mad at us. And we're like, well, we are, but I'm paraphrasing. When the shit hits the fan here in the South, we look out after each other. I will say this, after living in Texas for eight years, it's really friggin' true. That is what I witnessed yeah. down there. But don't worry, malcontents or mucontents. Courtney, I saw that. 
Sprinkles mm-hmm. the Cat is a mute content. They'll go back to hating each other. They're already at it right now, thanks to one yeah. Ted Cruz, but we'll unpack that one a little bit later. All right, moving yeah. on to story number five. We told you we would hold the Biden administration accountable, and we're staying true to that promise. The U.S. government is sounding the alarm of its ability to handle an influx of minor children crossing the border. The COVID, As COVID continues to rage, a record cold devastates Mexico and Texas last week. The government has the capacity to hold about 8,000 children, and right now they're at 90% capacity. Protocol, even under the Trump administration, is nobody should be in those detention camps more than 72 hours. As of January, there were 179 were held for more than three days. 45 were held for more than 10 days. Immigration activists call these facilities freezers because of the low temperatures inside, and that was before the Arctic blast hit Texas. The administration is struggling to manage the influx while not losing track of children in the system, where 750 kids today are awaiting placement. Kids in cages still do better. Jennifer, you get to unpack that shit show. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this again, and we've talked about this before. Um, I hear people all the time say, you know, we need to get these kids out of cages because that's not who America is. Yes, it is. If you look at, you know, our history, one of the ways in which um, white Europeans that later became white Americans got populations uh, that were not like them under control was by breaking up their families, was by taking their children. Um, you see this in slavery, that was one of the ways in which they kept slaves docile was by breaking up families and taking away their children. If you look at the longer history of U.S. government relations with Native peoples, boarding schools, uh, adoption, you know, the Indian Child Welfare Act in the 1970s made it so they could they had to stop taking so many Native children from families and placing them with white families. This is who America is, and it continues to be this way because it's effective and it has to stop. But people need to stop ignoring the longer history of it first. You could drop, don't drop the new mic, <laughs> but you could metaphorically no, drop the mic after that. <laughs> but please don't drop the new mic. All right, Jennifer, we can unpack that one. Reminder, malcontents, you get to vote because we're at the halfway point. You get to vote and pick the story. You want us to unpack. We're halfway there. So you may not want to vote right now because you may have a new favorite as we go down. And with Jennifer, with that, you can take it away with story number six. Oh, this is my favorite story, too, because it follows so nicely with us talking about children in cages. So Senator Ted Cruz, of course, takes his family to Cancun, you know, because he wanted a better life for them. So he figured he better cross the border. Um. A mariachi band was seen playing outside the home of Texas Senator Ted Cruz on Sunday as outrage continued over a short-lived holiday in Cancun, Mexico, during a devastating storm. Um, and as the Independent reported, according to witnesses, some of Mr. Cruz's neighbors went out to the street to watch the impromptu mariachi performance, which was organized by Houston-based Twitter user Brian, uh, I'm probably going to butcher this, Havinka. Um, there's a silent L there, I believe. Um, So just a typical Sunday mariachi band in town, said the Texan in a video. Uh, So this is basically, this was a way in which uh, people were kind of protesting out there, you know, Cruz's impromptu, um, which he says was a necessity, uh, this trip to to Cancun. And I believe we have a clip. Oh, my goodness gracious. Where do we start with Lion Ted Cruz? Do we start with him uh, throwing his kids and uh, wife under the bus? Do we start with him and his 
fake photo ops this weekend where he actually probably didn't help a soul with people who have analyzed the pictures? Do we do we do we have to admit that a broken clock is right twice when Donald Trump gave him the moniker of lying Ted Cruz in 2016? Yeah. Because there you go. We'll, we'll give the devil one point there. Um, yeah. I mean, what a dirt bag. And you know, Texas. I don't know. I, I just, I'm reading stories that like, oh, he'll survive this, yada, yada. I, Texans are pissed. Yes, Texans they are. are pissed. And I, I don't know if he's going to survive this. I hope not. But that was amazing. So kudos to uh, Brian for organizing that because good job. Yes, absolutely. All right. We're going to move on to story number seven. Uh, the Catholic League, a conservative nonprofit with over 11,000 members, is also unhappy with President Joe Biden. They have stated that Biden has a total disinterest in supporting religious communities because of his obsession with the right of LGBT plus people. The League chastised Biden for not talking about human rights more broadly and focusing on the rights of homosexuals and transgender people. CEO Bill Donahue, professional victim, wrote, in contrast to Biden's obsession with the rights of sexual minorities is his total disinterest in the rights of Christians. He ended his tirade by saying Biden's selective interest in human rights suggests that the rights of Christians at home count less than the rights of males and females who are, wait for it, sexually confused. As we reported last week, the U.S. House is voting on the Equality Act, which is expected to pass without GOP support this week. Jennifer! You get to unpack wonderful human being CEO, Bill Donahue. Man, do I even have to? Like, I mean, I I think if you're on my Facebook, which you are, you know how I feel about, like, these ideas, these, you know, very archaic ideas about gender norms and gender roles and who belongs um, in what category and how damaging these categories are. Uh, you know, if this is just another incidence of somebody from an older generation, uh, older white male thinking, you know, they know best and afraid of change and really holding on to these archaic values and this idea of the nuclear family and these very rigid um, gender identities. And quite frankly, I am just kind of over all of it. Um, and so I will be very happy when um, we get these laws passed next week that kind of push people, even those who are very uncomfortable, towards equality. You ready for story number eight? I am ready. All right, here we go. All right, so um, on university campuses, you know, most are remote. So in in places like the University of Chicago and Vassar in New York, um, you have LGBTQ plus students actually organizing um, remotely and providing support to one another and, you know, starting these groups where they can come together and share their common interests and share their struggles um, and not feel so isolated. And so they they are um, organizing organizing these remote via Zoom. Um, They have like a lavender graduation. Um, They have you know, people helping out freshmen um, who identify as LGBTQ+. Um, And it's just kind of this way in which they can develop community in the midst of this pandemic. You know, when a lot of people are, you know, very much struggling um, with, you know, ongoing inequality because of their identity. And it's just a really nice way that these universities and these groups are coming together, forming community, and providing each other with, you know, very um, pertinent support. So I always like to point out when we have stories that seem to line up like this, Jennifer and I do not collaborate on our stories. We go out, pick our stories, in because this happened last Thursday where we had stories that were like lining up, two stories that lined up into like one bigger story. Um, yeah. And no, we just, uh, this is just the way the chips fell, so to speak. Um, I yes. think this is fantastic. It isn't just help with their community. Everyone's feeling isolated right now. Hello. Um, yeah. And, and I, I, I can make the excuse of, well, I'm going to go out and film this protest or something. But I mean, a lot of people are 
uh, feeling super isolated. Work engagement is off 62%. Depression is up 46% because everyone's feeling alone. So anything that helps people not feel alone, I'm all for. Anything that helps my marginalized communities feel more connected, I'm even more for. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, story number nine. If Facebook knocks us off the air for this, you can go to malcontentnews.tv, uh, but not .com, .tv, and you can keep watching us on Twitch. I'm very serious. We may get knocked off the air for playing this clip on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, get ready to have your mind explode. <laughs> Jennifer, yeah. you got 60 seconds to unpack that. How do we even unpack that? So I was like in awe when you, because you said it a few days ago, I think, um, in our like news chats. And I was like, wow, that is really amazing. Because of course, now I'm hooked on TikTok, which is basically ruining my life. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, what an amazing, talented performer. Um, super cool that we got to share this, especially after as heavy as the show has been so far this evening. Uh, so I hope people got to enjoy that as a little bit of a palate cleanser. I, I just, you know, I, I need to do a slide on this note. So I'm just going to detune the guitar and then retune it by ear in the yeah. middle of playing. Yeah. Go ahead. No way. And look how young he is. Look, I mean, he's a young man. Yeah. I say he, it could be yeah. they. They are youngin'. They're a youngin'. I totally admire people with musical talent because I have none. I tried to play the violin for a while, but it sounded like I was just murdering a cat. Um, and my brother is super musically inclined. But yeah, I uh, I have none of that. All right, Jennifer, you can take us home. Story number 10. Oh, man. Are you guys sitting down? This is a tough one. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West are getting divorced. That's right. You heard it here and probably like 6,000 other places. But, um, you know, their their union is ending. Who didn't potentially foresee this coming? Um, he had, of course, his brief run for the presidency. Uh, those very problematic comments he made to TMZ about slavery being a choice. Uh, for which he was called out on, um, and other, you know, uh, concerned about his mental health over the past several years. Uh, basically, their their relationship has kind of fallen apart over the last few years. They were living in separate spaces. Um, he was living in, I believe, Wyoming, wanted her to relocate there. She was like, I am not doing that. Um, I think they have four children together now, but that union um, has quickly come to a close, and I hear that they're kind of rushing through the divorce, and she will be changing her name back to just Kim Kardashian here very soon. Do you think this hurts his presidential run for 2024? Let's ask the hard-hitting questions. I mean, God, I hope so. They have four kids? They do have four kids now, yeah. Yeah. I... And, you know, it's like, I mean, she's a Kardashian, but she does, she's done some good stuff. She's working, you know, trying to get, uh, become a lawyer. So she's, and she's been raising the children while he's been in Wyoming. I'm sure she's got a lot of assistance, but still four children in any capacity is quite difficult, especially when you have a lot of other stuff going on. Um, 
So yeah, I think uh, at this point, she's just kind of trying to get through this as quickly as possible, uh, kind of try and keep a little bit under the radar, which is basically impossible because it's Kanye West and she's a Kardashian. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens after this. We shall see. All yeah. right, Malcontents, this is it. It's time for the mods and admins to go ahead and drop that link one more time over in the comments. Now is the time. Uh, this is where you get to vote on the story that you want Jennifer and I to unpack at the end of the show. And we got a long show tonight. We got a lot of ground to cover, but we're moving fast. Jennifer, I actually think in the big scheme of things, we do it pretty good. Yay. Hopefully we don't rat hole an insurrection update because oh. we have a way of we have a way of going deep on the insurrection update. So we're gonna keep it moving. Brief pause for the cause, and then we're going to go ahead and go into the next segment. Cool. the right button Hi. <laughs> so far that's been the least of our problems tonight i've hit the wrong yes. button once um can you hear us is our documentary about events that happened in seattle from june 1st through july 4th it is a pivotal moment in seattle history and something that locally will be discussed for probably the rest of the city's history the documentary will be out for general release next week so we will have this out next week for everybody to see. It'll probably be more towards the end of the week, but it will be out next 